All right. Welcome back to Royal Instinct. Um, today we're going to be looking at a video from Chris Williamson um, where he's talking about trad tradcon wives. Um, I know a little bit about tradcon wives, um, not too much, but let's see what they say and um, how it fits in in today's society. The we should return to a tradcon history in the future is that that's so <clears throat> just quickly tradcon stands for traditional and conservative um conservatives usually vote for in america they're more republican so they uphold more standards traditions they're um they're more they want to keep traditions alive and make sure that they progress and that you know the democrats or liberals or the left doesn't you know tear apart society um traditional conservatives is important for strong identity for a continuation of society um but what a lot of people fail to realize is is that we the new nation that we all reside in is the internet and the these ideas people are of strong nations is difficult when we all actually live in a different country which is the internet so obviously i say the internet's a different country it's not a physical place but it's a virtual place and think about all the communication even um you know when you send a whatsapp or text message uh, an email you're 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 in a different location and you can communicate instantly um which is all done virtually over the internet so the country that we all reside in is the internet. Just a, a dead end as far as you're concerned? Well, I, I, I think we need to be, we just need to be a bit more attentive to where we are. And I think we can, we can afford to be a little bit more respectful of indiv the, the dynamics within individual couples. I mean, it's, it, it's generally like there are patterns which emerge, you know, in any, in any given heterosexual couple, you know. So already, um, I think that this video is about um, tradcon wives uh, and, you know, having those traditional values uh, to uphold society via the nuclear family. Well, you know, now that we live in a feminist society here in the West, at least, um, those notions of a traditional conservative wife go out the window. Um, there's a lot of people that want to go back to that old world, that old life, but they're cats at the bag, in essence. And um, in today's society, where once you could be, you know, <clears throat> have a great life within the town, village that you live in, the little area in the city that you live in, you know, you would go to the local bar or pub, tavern, and you would know people there because you see them all the time. It's your local place where you go to drink and socialize. That doesn't exist anymore. We're all socializing on the internet. Therefore, you have to become someone of value on the internet, right? There was always a popular group at school, okay? That those school, high school dynamics have now gone on to the internet, which is what social media is. And if you don't have a social media presence, if you aren't seen to be popular on social media, you're gonna have a tough time um, in the job market, in the dating market, your social status, in essence, um, in the future, and I say future, and I'm this is literally a few years away. Um, social media is going to have more and more influence on the way we live lives. There was that Black Mirror episode where um, they have that social credit system that people award you, which is we already like people's pictures, right? Um, the next thing is is that that like is a value to your ranking in society, and the more likes you can accumulate. Um, the higher you are in the social hierarchy, um, you can see it. Like all these billionaires um, that used to be like, they used to live life in secret, right? Now they're out in public, like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, you know, that they are out here showing off their money, showing off their popularity, because that is the new currency. It is how popular you are. Um, you know, Andy Warhol was talked about everybody having their 15 minutes of fame. It's like, you need fame to survive it is the new oxygen it's like if you're not able to have a following be seen by the public 
do you even exist? Think about how many people are lonely, right? Like they don't have friends in real life anymore because all their friends are online and friends go to whoever's popular at the time. So you have to find a way to stand out. What I advocate for is that you become a subject matter expert in whatever field that you find interesting. Like I was, ha I had a conversation with my friends today and, um, and even he, he was talking about the guy that we, a mutual guy that we both know is, is starting to make YouTube videos. And I said, yeah, man, that is, that is where the future's headed. Um, and I kind of gave him some ideas, you know, that he, he's, he's a script writer. He's, um, he's, uh, produced some films, some short films. And I'm like, look, that is your area of expertise. That is your passion. I said, you need to make videos regarding how the whole process works. You have to show the world step by step that you are a subject matter expert. And what I, uh, work with, with my clients is uh, we try to find out what the, uh, subject is where you can become an expert. You might not be an expert today, but over time, you know, if you put in the work, uh, you'll learn about the subject and you're willing to do it because you're passionate. <clears throat> so with the way I look at it is procrastination can never actually exist because you're working at something that you truly enjoy, right? And the more you work at something and if you enjoy it, the more you are able to do. And therefore, the longer you can outwork other people because you're enjoying yourself while everyone's struggling, you'll get more money, you'll get more fame, you'll get more social opportunities. And once you reach the top, all the women will want to date you because you're the only competent person left you know by having money by having a following you're literally showing to the world that you are a person to be taken seriously that you are a person that is competent uh very resourceful you know and then who wouldn't want to date you you know it is it's quite simple what i'm trying to explain um <clears throat> and it just takes consistency um i don't believe in hard work in the in the sense of um you need to focus and grit your teeth and do it and force yourself to do it and punish yourself gruelingly you know any top athlete you know like kobe bryant or michael jordan you know they will say that oh they trained relentless hours they enjoyed what they were doing <clears throat> and the other and having the added benefit of knowing what they were doing was going to be written in the history books was that extra motivation but they love basketball you know what I mean? They loved it. They, they, they were willing to sacrifice all those hours because it is who they were, it's what they believed in, it's what they enjoyed. And I want the same for you. Uh, I want you to be the Michael Jordan in whatever field that you decide to work in. Uh, even my friend, you know, with the whole script writing, film producing, I want him to be the top in that industry. Do you know what I mean? Because he will, he will be so good at it. He will work very hard at it, but he will n it will not feel like work to him. He will enjoy it for the rest of his life make a lot of money and um, date beautiful women. That That's just a, a dead... More respectful of indiv the, the dynamics within individual couples. I mean, it's it, it's generally like there are patterns which emerge, you know, in any in any given heterosexual couple, you know, that's been together long term, there'll be there'll be things which are more typical of the male partner and things which are more typical of the female partner. And I think and that's fine, you know, we shouldn't be trying to fight against those stereotypes if the, if they're what works for people. But I, I but but I don't see much point in imposing in, imposing kind of you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. Hmm. You know, because because ultimately, you know, people, well, people, people need work guidelines. Out people do need. <clears throat> yeah, she's saying that, oh, you shouldn't impose what people do. Well, in every relationship, in every dynamic, you need leadership. Uh, traditionally, men are those leaders. Um, in today's society, you know, you're not really allowed to be a man. You're not allowed to be seen as to be a leadership because you, people think you're mean if you're seen to be a leader. Um, the tough decisions are made by leaders. Um, you know, here at Royal Instinct, you know, I'm looking for about 100 people who see themselves as the future leaders of the world, as the future kings of the world, um, or queens, you know, um, and you're willing to build that kingdom and be the leader for people, right? Not everybody wants to be leader. Not everybody can lead. Not everybody is designed that way. Naturally, uh, I've always um, gravitated to leadership 
uh, positions because I'm an ENTJ, uh, which is the commander archetype. Um, when I was at university, I joined a dance group um, and I quickly, uh, within a year's time, I became uh, the, the leader of that dance group. I was a captain, I was a head choreographer um, and I wouldn't have uh, uh, done that if it wasn't for the type of person that I am. It, it's kind of built in into your personality. Um, and, you know, you, you don't have to be a leader by commanding people. You can actually be a leader by the ideas that you generate, and which is why, again, I advocate for becoming a subject matter expert because, you know, your passion, right? you, you only get to live a short life anyway, right? You have a small amount of time. Um, your passion will drive you to discover new ideas, right? Like the, the path that we're going uh, on with these hundred people that I'm looking for, um, it's going to be more discovering a new way of doing it, a better way of doing it. You know, the W E uh, the WEF, the World Economic Forum, you know, is going to, is going to lock people up. They're going to take away your rights. They're going to, you know, Make sure you own nothing and be happy, which is their slogan, by the way. I'm not making that up. You can go on the website. And they, they don't want you to own nothing. There's a small window of opportunity where we, uh, the people who think similar to me, who want to be part of my crew, part of my journey, you know, build a kingdom alongside my kingdom, um, where we can join the elites and from there rule for the goodness of humanity. Um, I, I really do believe in... If I could, I could help. I would help everyone in the world. You can't. Most people won't even fucking listen to you. Um, and I really want to find the best people to take the next step for the betterment of humanity. Right. Um, Thirty-three percent of males are sexless at the moment in, in the world, between ages eighteen to thirty. That figure is going to rise, right? Because more people are going to join that eighteen demographic is it's from going to 18 to 30 the measurement's going to be 18 to 45 very quickly you know in the next 15 years and so you're going to have more um sexless men which is a danger to society by the way because sex is a huge need for every man um so the, the path that the world's on it, it, it just, it just looks like it's going to shit there's people like me, there's people like you watching this, you know, because we're what, 12 minutes into this video, you know, most people would have clicked off because they, they can't face the truth that I'm spitting right now. Um, but you, you listening to this, it, this, what I'm saying, it makes sense. This is, this has been in the back of your mind for a long time and it should be you that leads the next phase of humanity. Not, don't leave it to these Tradcom wives or Chris Williamson and whatever these fucking people are doing. Guidelines. But but people, you know, pe people work. People people can figure out what works best for them. I mean, we don't have time to figure it out. We literally the, the we have a small window of opportunity within the next three to four years, right? You're gonna see your human rights diminish, right? Because they they're not gonna put down any new laws. They're just gonna restrict your financial access and your resources. So therefore, we must become leaders in our chosen fields of expertise. Um, build fame because that's when the social opportunities, that's when the financial opportunities come your way. You know, while, while Chris Williamson's here, you know, building his own fame, um, discussing different ways, monetizing your view time, by the way, um, you know, you should be building your own um, field of expertise and people should be listening to you because you know, the people who, who who watch my stuff, that they're good people at the end of the day. And it should be you with having that goodness for, for humanity that should lead them to a better future. Here's, here's one example. Um, so like talking in very general terms, I mean, I've made the argument that the problem with trad wives as such is that they're just not trad enough. 
um, in the sense that the, the what they're harking back to is a sort of mid mid twentieth century template, which was actually only true for a very small subset of the middle class, right. and which is distinct in itself distinctively modern because in in pre modern times all women worked pretty apart from the the very very richest. Right. <coughs> yeah. Um, what what we think of the traditional family nuclear family that in the nineteen fifties it only happened for a very short period of time when they needed the labor force to really put in a shift because we went from agricultural farming to industrialized um, cities. Um, and as a reward, you know, the whole American dream, you know, white picket fence, 2.4 children, that, that dream got sold to everyone because you, know, you had to have a reward to participate in this that you can come out of poverty into the middle class right now since the um 2020 um crash the middle class are getting squeezed you know there's a cost of living crisis in most western countries um here in the uk we've just entered recession um they're, they're trying to fuck with your money they're trying to fuck with your money and the only way to survive in the next phase is, and if you don't see it right Right, you have to wake up because you're watching people on TikTok, you're watching people on Instagram, on YouTube. They're getting rich off the back of you, okay? And therefore, you need to be like, oh, fuck, this is what's happening. You can't beat them. Therefore, join them, right? Join them quickly. And then, you know, use your own moral compass to do the right thing. And once you reach the top, you'll know what the right thing is um, for the people that follow you, for the people that you love, for your future children and the futures of uh, civilization. So you're um, so, saying so the idea fucking of like, send it further back, agrarian, grab your right. pestle and mortar and hoe and get working. In so, so, so the question I want to ask is what, what does a 21st century version of the pre-modern in productive household look like? You know, the, the, the house you know, where, where the, the basic economic unit is your household. And so you, you've agreed you're all in it. There's no all in it together because AI is going to take away your jobs. Um, machines are going to, you know, <clears throat> a traditional wife in today's society doesn't have to do fuck all if it, if she's um, if you've got the means to do it right. You know, dishwashers. Uh, you can hire a nanny. You can hire gardeners, cleaners, um, and then in the next couple of years, when you have uh, AI robots coming in, they'll do all that shit for you, right? Siri or what's the Google? Alexa, she will she will order order all your food. You know she will take care of the house for you. You just have to sit there and um, not do much. And then at what point does the does the, do these companies that run these machines squeeze enough resources at you, enough money where you can't even afford this shit anymore? All right? What use are you then to society? You know. Therefore, we sh we're shifting into a AI world, into a virtual reality where the jobs that are here now won't be available and you need to figure out how are you going to stay relevant? How are you going to stay of value to society? And the way to do it is by becoming a king, building a kingdom and the people who join you on your mission on in, you, in your kingdom will benefit and therefore will look to you for leadership. Again, I'm looking for a hundred of these kings, right? I'm looking for a hundred leaders who build their own kingdoms right with thousands of followers um and then alongside me you know we we all come together as kings and then take care of our of the new world that we're trying to build of the new society where we we want to make sure that you know that humans aren't just tossed to the side just for these you know elites to squeeze us for their for for, for our resources that we worked hard for together you're there for the long term you know everything that you do you do for the team um and then it's then it's just a matter of agreeing of, of, of figuring out how how we, how to get the best out of everybody and i and like i can't i'm not interested in legislating for any given couple what that looks like hmm. um and in in a, in a modern context where most of us work in the world of in the world of bits you can feel it in her energy i, I reckon she's got some great points um so i'm not discounting you know that that she she doesn't know what she's talking about, but you can just feel the, oh, I got to be politically correct. You know what I mean? I can't offend people, you know, like she's trying to be fair to everyone. And in the end, everyone fucking loses out. 
certain bites anyway. Like, I, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't say, I can't make that determination for you. She can't make it because she's not a leader, right? Like it's going to take some tough people. It's going to take some people who are willing to put their necks on the line, their balls on the line to really fight a good fight, um, to take on these elites because your, your ideas, you know, they're not going to be for everyone. Right. And we can we can't save everyone either. Like we we can only small save a small amount of people. You know your loved ones, your friends, your families, and and then the, you know the people who really resonate with your message will come along on that journey f with you, and um, they'll they'll have your back. Yeah. Um. But but you but there will be a way. You know when you when you form your household and you and you and you make your decision about how you can get the best out of your productive household. There'll be there'll be a, there'll be. There, there is no singular productive household because we're all living online and everyone's watching what everyone else is doing online. You know, your camera's looking at you every day. Like, like literally, you know, George Orwell's 1984. You know, if you don't know what that is about, just look up the Wikipedia or find a, find like a YouTube, you know, summary of it, an animation. That is where we're headed. Literally, there's cameras everywhere, CCTV everywhere. Everyone's listened to our conversations already. Um, the only thing is, at the moment, they can't publicly tell us what to do because I think there, there could be a quick uprising, but slowly and slowly, the more they embed AI into our lives, virtual reality, virtual reality into our lives, um, the quickly people wake up, oh, fuck, like, I don't have any rights anymore. I don't have any freedom anymore but then they'll be like oh but watch this tiktok video and you'll be like all right cool people are gonna give up people people there's not gonna be a fight there's not gonna be a resistance people are just gonna bend over and take it up the ass um there's a few people in the world that a message like this resonates with and if you are one of those people um you know come find me um you know talk to me not in public in person by the way <laughs> come find me on the internet um go to royalinstinct.com and then we can discuss what your role will be in the uh future wars to come in the future of humanity and how you will contribute to a better tomorrow your pattern and i think there's there's no shame in in accepting that sometimes that can fit into a more traditional mold what was that insight that you had about women needing to develop a strategy for not having it all? <laughs> Again, that, that is the biggest lie that um, women have been, been told over the last 30, 40, 50 years, that they can have it all um, pretty much since 1916, since the invention of the pill. Um, they can try everything and end up miserable. Um, too much choice um, doesn't lead to a better future. Um, women are delaying childbirth. Women are delaying starting families. And in the end, they're the ones who are losing out because most men are like, there's so much fucking information out there. They're like, oh, okay, we see what's happening. That There's so much evolutionary psychology floating about on the internet. People have realized, right, okay, what, what the fuck is this hypergamy shit about? And, um, they don't want to be taken advantage of. No one wants to be taken advantage of. And I don't really think people should take advantage of each other. I think women women should uh, complement each other instead of um, thinking that there's a a war of the sexes. Um, you know, I mean, it's been debunked that, you know, <laughs> that there's a, you know, a pay gap between men and women. Um, in, in, in reality, it's, um, you know, men work harder, longer hours, more dangerous jobs. Um, and women aren't willing to do that, but it doesn't have, they don't have to do it. If the men are willing to do it, just find a man that compliments you and together you can be a successful couple instead of successful individuals, you know, team sports are always more fun to watch, you know, like, like the hundred meter race is great, you know, but, um, the biggest sports in the world are team sports because humans are designed to be in communities. 
Well, I guess that's just a variation on talking about productive households. Because I mean, when, again, in Feminism Against Progress, I, the, the, the analogy I've given is weaving, which I think is, it's a very, it's a very powerful illustration of what happened to, to women's work at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. In that for, for some sort of 10, 20, 30,000 years prior to the Industrial Revolution, weaving was always women's work. And there are very, there are solid practical reasons for that. Um, you can, weaving is something, I mean, the a household needs textiles, right? You know, you don't have textile factories. Somebody needs to to make textiles you know you need them for clothes and you need them for all sorts of different so just on her point that weaving was always uh, the woman's job and then industrialization happened factories came along and took that job away from women right ai is going to do that to your job right now right if you're if you're thinking of going to to school you know if you're thinking of becoming I don't know, a fucking computer coder, right? You, you really love computer programming. Um, those entry-level jobs that you would have done, AI is going to be able to do it, okay? So so this future, um, whatever she, she, she's talking about, she, she doesn't consider that that whatever happened in the past to, to, the, to the weavers is going to happen to people in the future as well things so so somebody's got to do the weaving um and and somebody's also got to look after the kids happily weaving and looking after kids are fairly compatible well the weaving is going to be done by ai and your children are going to be looked after by robots because well, you can raise a loom off the floor um you can you can put down you can put down your repetitive you can do it whilst keeping an eye on you know toddlers or small people running around and it's interruptible and it's social so, so it's, it's ideal work to be, to be getting on with while you've also got small children underfoot. And so for, for millennia, millennia after millennia, uh, weaving has been women's work. Uh, but, but weaving was also one of the first industries to move out of the home, um, into factories. And at that point, uh, at that point, it was very, it was much more difficult for it to continue to be women's work. And, you know, those, those working class women who went to work in the textile mills had real dilemmas on their hands. Cause I mean, what are you meant to do with your breastfed baby? You know, and there was, there was, a, there are horror stories hmm. about, you know how how women tried tried their best to cope with that you know babies drugged with opium or you know left to starve or you know hmm. in you know left in the inadequate care of um, yeah and then there are those women who there are those women who who respond by just saying okay fine we're, we're not going to make the textiles anymore so we're just going to focus on on different stuff um i mean what is she I, I don't get what point she's trying to make here she's just kind of waffling a lot i mean let's carry on but she's a uh... She's not saying much. She's just kind of just waffling about weaving. But 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 the point is that um, if you're if it, what is the point? We yeah, we're, we're, weaving is a is a fine example of. She's not a great communicator. She is literally just folding right now. She's um, yeah. Chris has got to jump in there and save her. Like I, I feel I feel a little bit sorry for her right now. She's she's just crumbling. <laughs> Of, of, of the kind of work which which can Mumbling which in the, in, in pre modern times took place within a productive household, and and I suppose the question I have is you know what kinds of work like let's say you want to be a mum and let's say you've got small children around underfoot what's the, what what's the equivalent work that's a bit interruptible that's a bit social that's a bit um, you can pick it up and put it down again and, that's not and, what people think about when they think about have it all though right. It yeah, she. I think she. She. She didn't get the question. She and she just waffled on, mate. Like Chris is going to jump in and save her, hopefully. So let's just quickly get back to that. It's, I well, you can't to... have it all. Come on, everybody knows that. Well, they ought to. Mm -hmm. Like enough feminists prior to me have 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 leveled with the world. You know, you can't have it all. You know, you can have a lot, um, and you can you can have a great time doing it, but you can't have it all all of the time, all at once. You know, you have to do so, some things one after another. Louise said that she she worked it out and she was doing 40 hours a week of breastfeeding yeah. like a full a more than full-time aspects of your child's capacity for self-regulation and your you just think this is crazy you know there was a not not even that long ago there was a time when you you'd have been you'd have been left holding younger siblings or um other people's kids or you'd have been around little babies and, and it wouldn't have been frightening in the same way but it's you know the one of the reasons you know middle of uh, middle class older mothers like me I don't, I don't, I mean, what, what is, she's not making any points. Sit and sit there, you know, with our, with our, our, our late stage pregnancies, frantically consuming baby books is because we just don't, we don't have Didn't that, we don't have that practice around us anymore. Um, because it's families have got smaller and extended families have got.
I said nuclear families have been destroyed. Like, but what, more scattered and extended families have got smaller as well. So, so the, the, as, as Mary so eloquently explained. Potassium and magnesium with no sugar, no colouring. Just a product placement by Chris. Um, in the end, I mean, this, this, was, this was awful, <laughs> this video. She, she, she wasn't making any points. She, um, she talked about weaving a lot. You know, how can women have it all? Women are about to have nothing. Because AI is going to take that. The reason women have freedom is because they joined the labor force, right? Which took money away from men. Um, and as a result, the next phase is, is both men and women will lose out because we won't, because, because our jobs will be replaced by AI, right? It, it, it's simple as that. Jobs are going to be replaced by AI. Men and women are going to suffer. And it will drive all women to just jump on OnlyFans and sell naked pictures of their assholes and there's going to be a bunch of simps who have the last bit of money left that will actually want to pay for that shit um it, it's a sad state of affairs where humanity is going to not everyone can be saved you know like like you want to shake people away like wake up like this, this shit's happening it's like come on like we need to we need to figure a way out where we can not get screwed over by the elites but most people were just gonna they're going to take their Netflix, they're going to watch their porn, they're going to enjoy their OnlyFans, eat their McDonald's, and um, fade away into, into the background. But, you know, once they've been squeezed with the resources, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be uh, thrown away to the side. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to live the life of a king, become a king. And in today's society... It's the easiest time ever to become a king. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to find out what your expertise is in life, what your passion is in life, and we're going to make you the authority of that subject. Uh, people are going to look to you for guidance. You'll be a leader. Um, you are going to become famous because of your leadership abilities, because of your expertise. Other kings like me would want to network with you. You can build your kingdom alongside mine. We can both help humanity build business relationships, get the best business opportunities, make money, have money thrown at us. And uh, the hottest women who will be jobless, by the way, because of AI, we'll, we'll be able to save them from OnlyFans. Be like, look, you don't have to show your pussy online. Join, join our kingdoms and uh, enjoy the last bit of um of the next phase of human civilization because if you're not at the top it's gonna fucking be a very very bad time you know just all you gotta do is just watch hunger games or squid games and people are literally gonna be fucking eating each other um it's gonna be a horrible time but um i don't want that for you go to royalinstinct.com talk to me uh find me on twitter royal instinct as well um and until next time, let me just give you the handle for it is bear with me. Come on. It's Royal Instinct. It's Royal underscore instinct uh, on X on Twitter. Find me on there and uh, we'll be able to find what you are good at in life. Till next time.